Hi everyone, it's Chris at Tropical Discovery Workshops here. I hope you're well and I hope you're staying safe. So before I continue, I just want to say a massive thank you to Jay, Emily, Jamie and Lily for your kind donation um, toward the, towards the Tropical Discovery Rescue and Rehome Fund. Basically, because of the animals that I take in for rehome, I can't rehome at the moment. So I'm funding their feed, um, their health checks and, and stuff like that. So any money that I'm getting from that and from these videos will be going towards those animals that uh, the money's coming out of my pocket at the moment. And of course I can't work at the moment because uh, we're all in lockdown. So uh, yeah, challenging times, but we're gonna, get, we're gonna get through this. So the first thing I'm gonna do today is, well, in fact, this morning I spent about a good hour and a half to two hours cleaning out um, Dora the Royal Python and showing you her and also the bearded dragon Sydney um, cleaning out her tank um, but just as I finished stopped the video went to review it it disappeared so the video is no longer there so one second so there's the two tanks I did this morning that's Sydney in the top top tank Dora is a five foot royal python and she's in the bottom tank. I can just see her exploring the back corner on the left. She's mainly under that bit of uh, bark. But what I'll do is next time I clean them out, um, I will do another video showing you them then. Now, next thing I'm gonna do today is I've got some super giant Madagascan millipedes in this tank here, or in this box, in this rub. Um, they've been in here for since last summer. They're a year and a half old now, so now they're going to get transferred into a glass tank. And uh, just so I can see them more now, they're getting a little bit bigger. Um, and to, to just observe their behaviour really, because these are a climbing millipede. So what I'm going to put in there is a bit of cork bark as decor for them to climb over as well. Um, an old giant African land snail shell, which uh, had lying around. And also a piece of branch, like driftwood, so if they do want to have a little climb, they can have a go on that. So, first things first, I'm going to get the tank clean. By the way, I do use a razor, but if you are going to use one, please go careful. I'm talking to the younger ones of you um, and clumsy ones. Uh, so yeah, go careful. This is great for cleaning glass. So I've got a few bits and pieces in here already, like uh, a few stones. Um, cocoa fibre, which uh, is a, a substrate I've, I do prefer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of the substrate out of the millipede tub and pop it in here and mix it up and then I'll show you the millipedes. Incidentally, this substrate, which I'm putting into the tank, which is what the millipedes have been growing up on, 
This is a mixture of cocoa fiber, um, dried up leaves that have been sterilized by freezing them, um, and then obviously warming them up again. Uh, also bits of wood, decaying wood that I've broken up and mixed that in as well. So uh, the middle piece has got lots of stuff there to eat. So there you go, these are the super giant Madagascar millipedes. They're quite small, they're quite young. How many is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, what about eight or nine? And obviously some, uh, some apple core, which they love. Now let's find a big one, let's have a look at this one here. So, gonna get the tank set up, so I'm gonna add the branch that they can climb on. So maybe about, hmm. Yeah, about there. Of stones to weigh it down. And then I'm going to put some cork bark on there as well. Perfect. And the shell. Now the tank is actually going to be the other way around because of the way the door is on top. leaves when I found them. They're in a bag somewhere. Let's have them. Nope. Okay, so let's get these put in.
some people also ask if it's a millipede or a centipede. So centipedes legs go out to the side, millipedes legs go down. Centipedes are also venomous, whereas millipedes can be poisonous. Of course, the difference between a poison and a venom is a poison is something you eat or absorb through your skin, whereas a venom is something that's injected via a spine or a sting. So these can release a chemical down the side of their body, which is a taste deterrent. But there has been research that showed that lemurs will nibble these and other types of millipede and lick that chemical and end up frothing around the mouth and it kills um, anal parasites. So it's sort of like an insecticide. It's also a bit of a narcotic to them. So they self-medicate. So that's six. This is number seven. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that all of them? Oh no, it's another one. Eight. Any more for any more? Oh, okay. And there's a piece of apple there. Piece of old apple there. There we have it. Super giant millipede set up. Okay, they're all set up. They're um, happily burrowing into their substrate and uh, eating their apple. So I'm gonna pop them in their place in the room and I'm going to get the uh, rhinoceros beetle larvae. Bear with me. Okay, so let's check the uh, food to make sure they've got enough and also to make sure that they've got enough moisture um, in their substrate. So, I'm gonna get the camera a little bit closer and you can have a good look. the light on. There you go. Now this is the larvae of a rhinoceros beetle. Now these spend about a year and a half underground, well not underground, in a, uh, a rotting tree, eating the inside. And then they spend a little while pupating, and they make a cocoon. And then when they uh, emerge from that, they've metamorphosized into a beetle with a long horn if it's a male and a not so long horn of Savimo. So this one's moist enough, it's still got some food. So I'm gonna pop this one back in. This one's even bigger. They do like a nice tight area 
like the inside of a, a tree. That's what their poo looks like. Little parcel. Got great big mandibles here. They can chew through the wood. So this one's moist enough at the moment. Looks like it needs some more food. Now I feed these on decaying oak. But there's a bit of poo in there I've got to remove as well. So I'll show you the others. And I'll sort the poo and food out in a bit. Different species, a bit younger. Sieve the, the poo out, I'll give them some new substrate, give them some new wood, and they'll be done as well. Bear with me. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll um I'll try and do a video of each stage being progressed from larvae through to adulthood of the beetles. Um, and in the meantime, I think the only thing I've got left to do today is handle the chili rose tarantula. It's the one that I bring out a lot to shows um, and events. So I want to keep handling her while the lockdown's going on because I don't want her to get used to not being handled. So uh, I'll just grab her a moment. Okay, so this is India. She's a 15, 16, 16 year old chili rose tarantula. She belongs to my daughter. My daughter got this one when she was three years old. Uh, my daughter's now 13, coming on 14, and she's got about nine tarantulas. Now, what I do with all tarantulas, before I pick them up, I use the forceps, the handle end, to just move the tarantula away from the side of the box, and that lets me know her mood. And she's all right. Then, I'll put both hands either side, and I'll let her climb onto my hand like this. There we go. And then she'll have a little walk around for a bit. And she stopped. And she's brilliant. She's very, very handleable. I always do the back end of the tweezers, forceps, sorry, to just test her mood because just like us, she could have a bad day. She might not want to be handled. Always try not to talk to the tarantula or facing the tarantula because your breath could startle her. If she was to fall from a height of, say, well, I don't know, waist height, she could really hurt herself. Now there's a couple of different types of chili rose. There's the Gramostola porteri, which is this, which is the browny grey sort of with a pinky carapace. It's that part there. Um, and there's also the red chili rose, which is more of a more of a sort of a, a burgundy colour. And they're called the Gramostola rosea. These are quite common in uh, in the pet trade, although their prices have gone up in recent years. See so yeah, fangs there. Now, 
people think they burst if you drop them. They don't. They can split their abdomen, in which case that can be really bad for them. So they are quite delicate. They do have eight eyes. Poor eyesight though. They can detect shadows, light and dark. They do have claws, retractable claws like a cat, so they can put them away. They also breathe through book lungs, which are flaps of skin under the abdomen, whereas spiders breathe through whole school spiracles like insects have. And also the fangs on a tarantula go up and down, whereas on a spider, they're like pinches left and right. Now I'm gonna pop her back in. Now she's had a little handle. Incidentally, the black things at the back, the spinnerets, that's what they lay the web. They can lay about nine different types of web, like fuzzy webs for where, uh, for um, eggs, trip line webs, carpet webs, because they make their carpet web pretty much to detect prey. You get other, obviously other spiders, that, well, you get spiders that make webs in trees and hedges and catch prey that way. This one does it by, by detection through the feet, and then they pounce. So I'll put a bit of water in hers. Now I always let it, let it overflow a little bit, so that can bring a little bit of humidity. Chili roses don't need um, much humidity at all, but I always like to have a little bit in there so it's not too dry. Um, but I don't soak the substrate like I would with something like the Pocleothera metallica, the, uh, the Gucci ornamental. The blue one, the one I cleaned the tank out from the other day. In fact, she's out. Let me just see if I can get a shot of her while she's out. Okay, there she is. Sorry if you got my reflection. I'm trying to show you how blue she is. There you go. She's about five years old now. Four or five years old? Yeah, about five. These have got one of the most painful bites of all the tarantulas. So I don't handle this one, obviously. Hence, it's also behind lock and key. And also, the reason why I fed her before I cleaned the tank out the other day. Excellent. Right, I'm going to call it a day. All that's left for me to say is I've set up a Patreon account and Patreon is like, uh, it's a way of people can people can sponsor me for the videos I make. Um, and in return, I give a reward. So for example, it could be um, a bamboo toothbrush and straw, or it could be as well as a shout out on my next video. Um, and also it's going to be that you get to have a video um, say about a week before I actually put it out to everybody else so you get like exclusive access to that video before anyone else um, I'll put details of that in the description as well if you do want to be a patreon have a look at the website you know obviously there's no obligation just have a look um, if you are in a position to help out great the money will be greatly received towards the rescues and rehomes um, and it's not a must you'll still get to see the videos just a bit later than everyone else um, so until the next video stay awesome and take care of yourself Bye-bye. Meantime, what I'm going to do now, so this will be... Yeah, we're going to put a little setup in there for her. Yes, I'm going to